On the surface, In Time looks like any other high-concept sci-fi film. There's a dystopian future where bad scientific shenanigans are afoot, and it's up to our hero to save the day by putting the world back to how it should be. However, Below the Surface is a film that is actually an interesting critique of capitalism. Welcome to this week's Sight Unsound. In the world of In Time, physical currency has been replaced with time. Everyone on Earth has an internal clock on their wrists that activates once they're 21. When this reaches zero, that person dies or times out. With the clock that governs production built into the bodies of the workers, Andrew Nicholl's film points to the amount of power that capitalist production has to control the intensity at which we need to labour to survive. The film shows a world where the human body has become a vessel which is simply there to serve the process of production as effectively and efficiently as possible. As there is a constant reminder of their worth, an individual becomes distinctly aware of their place within society and the class that they belong to as they are unable to escape it or even attempt to conceal it. Our hero, Will, has grown up without the luxury of any spare time and has hardly ever had more than a day to live. He exists in a perpetual hand-to-mouth economy, worried at every turn that he might run out of time. Like the other workers who live this way, Will is so busy staying alive that there is no time to even think about the system and how it came into being, let alone find a quiet moment to plot a revolution that might overthrow it. The system has won through its ability to control the populace by ensuring that their access to resources, or time, is regulated in a way that there will always be a perpetual productive and obedient workforce supplied to maintain the systems of production, whilst never being able to challenge those that control it. As Will's voiceover says at the beginning of the film, I don't have time. I don't have time to worry about how it happened. It is what it is. Furthermore, Will is told, for few to be immortal, many must die. Both of these ideas create a false consciousness. False consciousness is a term used by Marxist thinkers for the way in which material, ideological and institutional processes in society mislead members of the proletariat in order to ensure that they continue to be in step with capitalism so that they will remain in harmony with the processes of production for the good of the system as a whole and keep the status quo in place. In crafting an ideology where the workers within the narrative believe that there isn't enough time or resources in the world for them and that it is better to have a few people who can live forever, they will not believe that they have the right to equal time. In direct contrast to those who live within the slum-like timelines are those with plenty of time who inhabit New Greenwich. The name New Greenwich clearly positions the city as an imperial standard. To begin with, it is an obvious reference to Greenwich Mean Time as the global standard of measuring time. This is a possible hint to the portrayal of the measures on which we value success within a capitalist system. How much money, or time, does an individual have? Those who live within New Greenwich are flush with time, and are thus able to use their abundance of resources to create more of it for themselves, often it seems by gambling. The separation between workers and those benefiting from their labour is a long-standing political issue and a classical theme in allegorical and dystopian fiction. Frequently, our heroes in these narratives move across the divide between classes so they are able to experience the way of life that the other half do. The same happens during In Time, where Will crosses to New Greenwich. However, in order to get there, he has to pay increasing amounts of time at various checkpoints along the way. This can be seen as a metaphor for the false promises of social mobility within a capitalist society. Although a more sympathetic reading of capitalism is that any and all have the opportunity to move up the social strata, this is often not the case for many from poorer backgrounds due to diminished access to the means of production and thus the generation of capital. In order for Will to make it to the higher echelons of society, he literally has to pay in blood. Even when he arrives in New Greenwich, Will is uncertain how to behave in this new world. He raises suspicion as he runs rather than walks on the streets of New Greenwich. This illustrates how the limitless capital of time in this new environment makes speed or energy superfluous, something that has haunted every waking second of Will's life until this point. The languid speed of people here is contrasted with the panic of Will's running mother a few scenes earlier, making her death all the more tragic. As is required in any Man Against Society narrative that is usually the staple of the dystopian science fiction genre, Will makes an attempt to overthrow the old system in place and tries to awaken the world out of its current state of false consciousness. However, the revolution he embarks upon at the end falls short of the Marxist allegory that was promised at the beginning. 
Will and Cynthia do not overthrow the corrupt systems of power that currently hinder the development of a fairer and more equal society. Rather, they work within the systems of power that are already established and disseminate the time equally amongst those who do not have it. Although a generous and noble gesture, this act is a misunderstanding of the Marxist revolutionary doctrine, taking a more literal and liberalised view of equality through redistribution, rather than empowering a working class to refuse to continue existing simply as a means of production and overthrowing those who actively oppress them. In this new world that Will has created in redistributing time, the rich in New Greenwich still control the means of production. If events such as the financial crisis of 2008 show us, there will always be more money, or time, to replace what has been lost, which usually comes at the expense of those who have the least. It could be argued that this ending is a compromise that a more mainstream narrative would have to have in order to be able to make an impact upon a Western audience with a sympathetic view of capitalist systems. However, we can still take hope from the film and the theories behind it. Marx believed the proletariat will one day develop the class consciousness needed to rise up in revolution against their oppressors and create a classless society. It will just take time.